This is the only dash cam video you need to watch in India. And yeah, beware of some of the so-called high-rated dash cams on Amazon because you'll see why. See, dash cams are really important these days. So I ordered all of these dash cams to find out the best ones you can buy in India and the dash cams you shouldn't buy in India. I'm going to tell you the best dash cam under 5K, the best under 10K and the best 4K dash cam around 15K. So let's start with the budget dash cams. So under 5K, we have these four dash cams and these are the specs of all of these dash cams. Now specs wise, the Red Tiger F3 has the upper hand in certain features, but when it comes to a budget dash cam, the focus is obviously on the video quality. Now, let me make it clear that none of the budget dash cams offer really good video quality. Things can range from decent to bad. And out of the four, if I had to rank the budget dash cams in terms of video quality, I'd say the Red Tiger F3 is number one, the 70My M300 is second, the DD Pi Mini is at third, and the Cubo dash cam is at fourth. See in daytime, the M300 is the best out of the lot in terms of video quality and sharpness. Most times the number plates and info is visible. The Red Tiger dash cam kind of over sharpens things which helps in the nighttime footage which I'll get to but in daytime, farther the object goes more pixel dated it kind of gets. However, do note that number plates of the closer cars are fairly visible. The DD Pi Mini comes close to the F3 but lacks a little bit in terms of quality. Then there's the Cubo which has kind of blurry footage all around which gets clearer only when the car is approximately 5 to 7 feet away right ahead of you. When it comes to nighttime, the Red Tiger F3 captures the sharpest footage out of the lot. I mean, the compromise is more noise, but if you're looking at a dash cam that shows you the most information, this is the king in the budget segment. The M300 is the next best, which has a nice balance of noise and sharpness for this price point. As for the DD Pi and the Cubo, they struggle in nighttime with very noisy footage, no details at all, and it just feels like footage you'd get from old CCTV cameras. What makes a dash cam even better is how good the app is, and this is where the 70My app and the Red Tiger app are pretty good. See, both the app saves the videos in a three minute interval and scrolling through the footage is also smooth, so that's no problem. Look, the only reason why the 70My M300 does not win is because of a glitch I faced multiple times. See, the problem is the M300 randomly switched off multiple times for us and I'm not sure if it's a problem with our unit or if it's a problem that everyone's facing, but it is a big concern in a dash cam. The Q app, on the other hand, probably offers the best looking experience, well, only if it connects. I mean, pairing is a big task, the screen goes blank sometimes, it's just messy. Cube is also the only one in the entire list which does not let you turn off events or collision alerts and the device rings up even in the slightest of bumps. Lastly, the DDPi app is even worse. It freezes 90% of the time and is just laggy as f Moving on to the under 10K segment, these are the two best dash cams I found. I'm talking about the Hikvision F6 Pro and the 70My A500S. And if you look at the specs, the A500S looks good, clearly. It has more features, but let's get in detail. The Hikvision F6 Pro has a soft touch build and adjustability of the Hikvision camera is much better as it is mounted on a ball mount. Now it's not very feature rich and this recording indicator is not visible on a bright day, but it has a couple of voice control features. Snapshot to take a photo, recording on to enable audio recordings. Now comes the A500S and elephant in the room, this display. Is it a big deal? Well, not really. See, there's only one use of this display and that is to navigate within the camera settings and menu, which by the way, you can also do from your phone. Now, thoughtfully, they've also provided a clip which the camera mounts on so you can take it out easily and the clip stays on the windshield. But how would you power it when you take it out as the wiring would be concealed within the roof liner? Anyway, the display is extremely distracting at night, but yeah, you can thankfully turn it off. Now, where the A500S shines is the daytime video recording. I mean, it's just better overall in terms of sharpness and clarity than the Hikvision and it has a wider field of view and video seems much richer. It's a night video recording where the roles kind of reverse. Where most dash cams struggle to get the overexposed number plate at night, Hikvision just somehow manages to capture it. The overall quality might be better in the A500S, but you decide, better quality or better info. The A500S also has ADAS, which honestly I'm not really a big fan of, but it's there for those who want it and it works well. There's a dedicated button too to record emergency events. As for the app support, the 70My app is fine, but it shows you multiple three minute files that you can download or play, but that's pretty much it. On the Hikvision app, viewing past footage is way easier as you can just view the footage easily by just scrubbing through the timeline and not opening separate files all the time. Look overall under 10K, the 70My A500S is obviously more feature rich, no doubt, and it captures very good footage, but just for the night footage, I would prefer the Hikvision F6 Pro. Now the Hikvision dash cam does not capture as sharp footage as the A500S in daytime, but it's not far off in terms of quality and the better app experience in the Hikvision just seals the deal for me. 
Now for the best 4K dash cam, we finalize these two 4K dash cams. See, both of these have displays, 4K front cameras, 1080p rear cameras, but they do have their differences. For example, the F7N's display can show you the front and the rear feed at the same time in the display. On the 800S, you can switch between them with this button. Both the displays also let you adjust all the settings, but navigating the UI on the A800S is just more seamless with these buttons. As for the app support, both have fairly decent apps, but what's weird is that you can only see the rear camera preview in the Red Tiger app and not in the 70 My app. Also, the Red Tiger app shows you way more detail. Now, one thing to note, if you want to connect the F7 and dash cam to its app, you have to turn on Wi-Fi on the device manually every time. Not a big deal, but a little annoying. Anyway, it's the video quality that matters. Now, in daytime, both cameras are very close in terms of sharpness, dynamic range. The number plays are visible pretty much 90% of the times at an average speed of 50 to 60 kilometers per hour. Now, in no light, the F7N is slightly better details, but it compromises on the quality of the footage as it has slightly more noise than in the A800S, which is fine because details matter more if you ask me. See, the A800S's video quality is fine too, but what's interesting is that the F7N, along with support for 4K 30fps video recording, supports 1080p 120fps video recording and that makes a difference. I mean, in a few instances, 1080p at 120 could capture number plates better than 4K 30 in the A800S. Obviously, that doesn't mean that the quality is better, but yeah, this is a handy feature to have. But there's one thing to note, and that's the fact that the F7N does not let you record in 1080p at 120 FPS or 1440p at 60 when a rear camera is also connected. I know, kind of weird. Now, when it comes to videos from the rear camera, both are kind of average, be it in daytime or low light. I mean, it can only be used to see the number plate when the car is close by, and in low light, car details are only visible when the car is stationary. Honestly, rear cameras in these dash cams should only be used as reference and not for detailed information at all. Overall, I'd say both of these dash cams are really good and really close, and I've seen a lot of people recommending the A800S, but I'm just more inclined towards the F7N because of the added sharpness and more detail in the video because, let's be honest, these devices will be used in the case of an emergency and I wouldn't want to lose any important information. But that was our fairly detailed video on the best dash cams to buy in India and if you still have any questions or doubts, make sure to comment below and I'll try to answer as many questions as I can and thanks for watching and see you in the next one.